The remains of some American sailors have been found in sealed compartments aboard the USS John S. McCain, Admiral Scott Swift of the U.S. Pacific Command said Tuesday. Swift said the Malaysian Navy, which has been involved in the search, has also located potential remains and they are working to confirm and identify those discovered. The Navy vessel suffered significant damage to its hull when it was hit by the Al Nikmak, a 30,000-ton chemical and oil tanker sailing under the Liberian flag. Ten sailors have been missing since the incident which occurred Monday. Swift did not identify who or how many people the remains belong to. It's premature to say how many and what the status recovery of those bodies is, he told reporters. The collision is the fourth in a year involving a U.S. Navy vessel. Chief of Naval Operations ADM John Richardson announced Monday that Navy operations would be paused around the world and a full safety review ordered. The USS John S. McCain arrived at Changi Naval Base Monday where damage control efforts halted further flooding. The warship was on its way to a routine port visit in Singapore when the collision occurred. Navy divers accessed sealed compartments located in damaged parts of the ship and conducted assessments of the hull and flooded areas, a statement from the U.S. Navy said Tuesday. Meanwhile, ships from the Malaysian and Singaporean navies continued to provide search and rescue assistance alongside U.S. helicopters and vessels near the site of the crash the statement added. Yet quite how the Navy vessel, which is 505 feet in length, collided with the 600-foot Al Mikmak remains unclear. Swift offered no further details on the cause of the crash but said the search and recovery mission continued and that a thorough investigation would be carried out. Those thoughts were echoed earlier Tuesday by Admiral Harry B. Harris, commander of the U.S. Pacific Command, said the Navy was working with our friends in Singapore and other nations in the region to help in the search and rescue effort. Harris added that the operational suspension was important due to a number of unfortunate incidents in the Navy recently, on June 17. The USS Fitzgerald crashed into a Japanese merchant ship, killing seven sailors. The ship's three senior officers were relieved of their duties after an investigation found the sailors responsible for watching the bridge lost situational awareness and that serious mistakes were made by the crew. On May 9, meanwhile, the USS Lake Champlain collided with a South Korean fishing boat off the Korean Peninsula. And on August 19 last year, the USS Louisiana collided with the USNS Eagle View a Navy support vessel, off the coast of Washington state. No one was injured in either incident. Harris said the safety review would allow commanding officers to take a pause, to take a look at his or her procedures, and look at the readiness of their crews to do the difficult job of sailing at sea. He also added that it would be sequenced in such a way that the U.S. Navy will maintain its primary responsibility of defending our homeland and the homelands of our allies.
four years after the 195th and final F-22 Raptor stealth fighter rolled out of Lockheed Martin's factory in Marietta, Georgia, the U.S. Air Force still hasn't committed to developing a new manned air superiority fighter. But the world's leading air arm is proposing to develop some kind of new aircraft to complement, and perhaps replace, the F-22 on the most dangerous air dominance missions in heavily defended territory. Noting that enemy air defenses are developing faster than the Air Force can counter them, the Flying Branch's Air Superiority 2030 flight plan, published in May, warns that the Air Force's projected force structure in 2030 is not capable of fighting and winning. Developing and delivering air superiority for the highly contested environment in 2030 requires a multi-domain focus on capabilities and capacity, the flight plan notes. To that end, it calls for the Air Force to begin developing, as early as 2017, a new Penetrating Counter-Air System, or PCA. Capability development efforts for PCA will focus on maximizing trade-offs between range, payload, survivability, lethality, affordability and supportability, the flight plan explains. Studiously avoiding specificity with regard to the PCA, the plan leaves open the possibility that the new penetrating counter-air system could be manned or unmanned. In any event, the PCA will be part of a network of systems. While PCA capability will certainly have a role in targeting and engaging, it also has a significant role as a node in the network providing data from its penetrating sensors to enable employment using either standoff or stand-in weapons, the plan explains. The penetrating capabilities of PCA will allow the stand-in application of kinetic and non-effects from the air domain. In other words, the PCA could be a highly stealthy manned fighter or drone whose main job is find targets for other systems to attack.
good one. You are recording. Okay, we're ready in three, two, one, action. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Ready. Okay, we're ready. Three, 